Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. I hope everybody's having a great weekend. Happy Saturday. Um I'm let me show you the uh the Frankenstein mule. Uh show you where I am at it, just kind of a, a little progress. Uh some of you guys are, are watching it travel along um on its road back to moving. So let me show you where where I'm at. The, um, uh, let's see, yeah, I'll talk about that in a moment. When you're putting one of these together, what you're fighting for is maximum flexibility as you're getting everything in place, right? Given that I want these to be straight up and down, the ability to slide my subframe, my new frame, back and forth is kind of important. So the front motor mounts I made for it, um, probably you can see that one easier. Actually, you really can't see either of them very good. This is the front motor mount, mount, or the front frame mount, and there's a pair of them, right? This one, and that one over there. You can see this is my subframe, and you can see down here is a cross member on the original frame. And I just put a plate on the top and on the bottom, and there are four bolts going through. And as I tighten them down, it'll smash one frame up against the other. But what this allows me to do is I can slide my frame um, until I, you know, decide exactly where I want it. I could slide my frame back and forth like that, and I could also slide it in and out like this. This is the second piece I'll be attaching to, and I haven't completely decided how I'm going to do this yet. Um, I haven't decided if I'm just going to take some box steel. This exact piece, as a matter of fact, and cut a piece, cut two pieces of it. So picture one, two or if I'm going to go with an entire length of it and just cut the top off of it and weld it to the cross member here. Now picture if I have two little pieces, right? It'll be sitting here and here and then I can make another set of those and clamp it down so I could do that, or I can put a piece way across and, um, and just hold it rigidly to this. I was considering that and then just putting one bolt in the center. So I'm kind of going back and forth. Once that happens, I'll still be able to, until I put the bolt in the center obviously, I'll still be able to slide the frame sideways, but at that point, once once I put that channel here, there's no more forward and backwards. I'm locked. Um, you could see I've cut the uprights now, right? And I'm getting to the point where I more or less have a frame and what's left to do is now I have to start thinking about where am I fix fixing, where am I going to put my um, my back axle, right? Where is that going to be? And um, from wherever I put that, that determines where the engine and torque converter are going to land. One of the problems I am having, and um, quite quite simply, the way the way it works is, you know, behind the engine, so to speak, it be um, or in front of the engine. Let's go with. That's the front of the cart. So in front of the engine, this mount is not a problem. But behind the engine, because the torque converter kind of sticks below, below this plane, it's, it's fighting me a little bit, and I'm trying to figure out exactly what to do about it. 
I'm trying to figure out if I kind of want to pick up off of this or put a, another piece across here and then a piece like this which means my engine, let's say I'm bolting it here, right? I'll have one, two, that'll be rock solid, right? Um, and if I have, try to, try to get one as close to this bolt as possible on my way by, that one will be solid. But this one is still a little bit, you know, because I have the torque converter coming down, right? I can't have a cross member here because it'll go right through the torque converter, right? So I can't do that. And I really, coming in from here, I gotta be careful because when this jacks up, right, this is gonna be kind of up here also. So I can't, I can't go through this. So that, that's what I'm, I'm kind of still fudging around, fussing around, spinning it around in my head exactly how to do, right? These two motor mounts are good. This motor mount's probably okay, but this this one out here is still kind of out in the breeze, and I'm I'm still trying to figure out exactly how to support that. So I'm I'm still thinking about it. One of the things I was considering doing is um, putting a a good size piece of box steel. And where did I lose that piece? I guess it's this piece, right? setting the top of this box steel even with the top of this and then it would go down quite a ways and then if it's big enough just kind of cut out for the torque converter in it then it would be going completely across and it would be getting supported by underneath so I am considering that once again I have to I have to spend just just a little bit more time kind of Kind of fussing or fussing around with this to figure out exactly how how that's going to go. Um, this, the bottom of this right now with the tires on the ground, it's only like four inches off the ground. That's a four by four underneath it, right? Making it level as it is. Um, that doesn't seem to be enough ground clearance for me. I I just have this horrible idea that I'm going to. I'm going to um, smash the hell out of the front of that um, transaxle. Um, it does rotate backwards a little bit more when, when those mounts are hooked up properly. So it will, it will rotate back. But even with that, I'm not, I'm not liking the looks of it. So I think I'm going to make... I'm going to order a bigger set of tires for it. I think I'm going to go with 22... 11 eighths the rims are 8 inch and these are I think these are 18 What are you guys? They're Doros And they're 18 18 9 8 So 22 will get me up yet another at least two inches, right? That'll that'll jack me up a couple more inches, right off the ground. Um, which means now I gotta fudge around with the uh, gearing a little bit more. A little bigger set of back tires, I think, will match up to the fronts. So those are twenty-one nine sevens, I think. No, twenty-one seven nines. Those are twenty-one seven and nine. Um, so I think I think going up to 22.11.8 will make a better a better set of uh, tires. Uh, then these I could put these on the um, on my off-road golf cart, um, which hopefully gives me a little a little better traction. Though I do like those slicks because they donut real nice. Um, next thing. Um, sprockets this sprocket here has um 12 teeth and it's got a three quarter inch of bore and it won't slide on so i said 
oh, homie could fix this. So I'd picked up something with a 7 8 bore, which uh, is way too loose, so I'm going to have to shim it. But when I ordered this one from the same individual, I ordered this, oh, and this is uh, 14, 12, 14. This one is 17 with a one inch bore, because you see how this steps up? So the one inch bore is actually quite a bit tighter, right? Um, so I could probably get away with, with just forming a, um, I gotta put a keyway in it, obviously. But um, I think probably what I could do is just form a piece of uh, sheet metal. I'll just work on the various gauges of sheet metal thicker and thinner so that uh, this thing is is solid in there if worse comes to worse I you know I could always I could always put something on my lathe and uh, and cut it you know start out with a pipe that's uh, thicker or um, bigger than this shaft and then I'll, I'll bore out the center and then uh, turn it until it's the right thing cut it for the keyway put a fat keyway in there a, a, a tall keyway in there and then uh, set it all up I'm thinking given that I'm probably gonna go up the next tire size that 17 would be a better number on there right now I think what's coming out of the torque converter is a 10 so a 10 would have been a little bit of a gear reduction with 12 a little bit more of a gear reduction with um, 14 and with a 17 um, it's yet more of a gear reduction if you assume and we're this is all back of the envelope calculations but your typical golf cart motor um, Theoretically, they sound like they're governored down to about 2,500 RPM when uh, this governor starts doing things. So, um, and that 2,500 RPM uh, makes this thing go somewhere around 12 miles per hour. So, let's, I'm going to, my engine before the... Um, I'm, I'm not going to worry about this, this governor works by how fast the golf cart is moving the governor I'm going to have on the Predator will wide open lock me at 3600 RPM which is it, you, you know this thing will probably go theoretically one third faster so instead of doing somewhere call it 2400 RPM let's make the math go easy so instead of doing 24 um, and 12 miles per hour, I'm figuring if I get another 1,200 RPM out of it instead of 12 miles per hour, hopefully she'll be doing closer to 18 to 20 miles per hour. But then if I cut that in half, maybe I'll get it down to somewhere around, you, you know, it's not quite half. Um, that brings it down to seven or eight miles per hour, eight, let's say, but then the bigger tires bring it back up again, which somewhere around 12 miles per hour, which is about what I want this thing to do. So that's, how's that for back of the envelope, up and down and all around. So I'm thinking with the 17, um, with the one inch bore, 17 tooth being driven through the, um, through the 10 inch the 10 tooth torque converter that between the up and down and 3600 rpm and everything else this thing should be good somewhere call it 10 to 15 miles per hour which is about what i want it to do i really don't want it to go any faster than that um 10 miles per hour especially with the torque converter for getting out of the hole so to speak for coming up from zero for pulling pulling away with the load for towing a trailer right it it looks like I got a three to one, four to one, um, right when the torque converter is just real low on the front pulley and high on the back pulley. So I'm you, you know 
first gear wide open three or four miles per hour I, I mean even with six and a half horsepower it should be able to do that pretty easily without burning the clutch up and then once I got it running wide open 10 12 miles per hour it, it still should have plenty of chutzpah for getting up and down the hills and everything else I wanted to do so um, guys a lot of times with these projects it's you may ask questions about you know or you may have suggestions or you might have done something that I'm doing that didn't work um, please share all those thoughts by the way I read all the comments I, I do but unfortunately I you, you know I'm like everybody else our, our lives are busy I you, you guys could tell when I have time I'll kind of start off with the freshest comments and work my way down as far as I could go answering them um, and you guys could also tell when I've I've been busy it might be a couple of days where I, I don't get to I don't get to answer comments it, it sucks and I apologize I, I do read everything feel free to comment um, you know, if you have a criticism, I mean, if you could put it tastefully, I'd, I'd like that better. Like, you know, I think the following might be a little too weak is a nice way of saying something. Um, uh, writing down, you jerk, you incompetent idiot, that's going to snap and you're going to break your neck. Eh, a little less diplomatic. So let's, let's try to be positive. Remember, there are folks whose kids read this stuff, so... Um, y you know, it's bad, uh, bad enough that the elections are, y you know, you got one group calling the other group unstable, and then you got the other group talking about sex tapes. I mean, it's bad enough we got this crap going on in our elections that we don't, uh, we don't need it to go on uh, with YouTube. We can, we could do better than they do folks and then just for a laugh let's try so anyway here it is guys once again please make your comments positive or corrective <laughs> and uh we'll go forward from there um the owner wants that this is this is sold um so i still got to get it on a pallet and um get it on my truck we're making arrangements for for that to leave um and for those bikes how much time i've already burned too much time i'll have to talk about those later but um the go-kart and the atc next to next to it are gone but you know what i think i'm going to go through the sheds and all and i think i'm going to keep putting some stuff out there for you know if anybody i you, you know, I got some more go karts that that should move on, and a couple of other things. I think, I think I'm just going to, uh, I think I'm just going to kind of bring, bring some of that that stuff out. And uh, if somebody wants it, let me know. If not, I'm going to unload the sheds, and it's going to get on that black trailer. I'm going to do what Musty One does. He loads his trailer up. And eventually, he picks through it and takes all the good stuff. And then after a while, what will happen is he'll need the trailer to haul something. Let's say mulch. I'm just throwing that out there. Mulch, he, you, you know. And it's like, well, can't haul mulch unless I empty the trailer. So he goes to the scrapyard and backs up and pulls the lever. And it automatically dumps. I'm not going to be that lucky. I have to unload mine. But... He gets rid of crap that way, and that's not a bad thing, you know. Every once in a while, you you do have to flush out. Next thing you know, you got some crappy old rusty frame taking up prime real estate, and you got you, you know, you got good stuff lying in the snow. So uh, I'm going to try to be better than that. Anyway, folks, sorry for the long video. I want to thank you all for watching, especially if you made it all the way here to the end. I want to thank you for watching and commenting and subscribing. And remember, I do read everything. Keep making the comments, and I'll, I'll always do my best to get back to you. Take care now, folks. Bye.